Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. This is your daily show. I'm your host, Khalid Moeed, and coming to you a little bit earlier as per usual. You, As you know, it is currently Ramadan, so when we break our fast and we want to get the video done before we break our fast, and of course, I needed to start this a little earlier because there's so many teams to get through, there's so much to discuss. So I've come to you now a little bit earlier so that we can bring you to you this epic show. I don't want to bring you a half-hearted show, when we, I know I need more time to talk to you guys. So today we're going to be discussing the restructure. And obviously the teams were announced today, um, around about 12 p.m. in South African time. And interesting squads, as we see the full squads unfold. Uh, very interesting, um, the, the players that they've, they've taken and the players they've chosen um, in their different squads. Obviously some teams have more contracted protest players than others. Um, we put out an, a, a story today and uh, about from Borland, from the Borland CEO, James um, Fortain, who gave us some insight into what it, he had to do to obviously pick certain players and sign certain players and what he, as a CEO, what he sees Borland as. So go check that exclusive interview out. It's on this channel in the exclusive interview section. You can see it is one of the up latest uploaded videos on this channel. So go ahead and check that out. It's also a story on our website at clickerfanaticsmad.com. But before we get going, before I reveal to you all the squads, I know you guys would have checked the full squad on our website as well. But bef um, I'm going to just tell you guys to please subscribe to this channel, obviously, and click that notification bell for all future videos. So let's get into it. Um, I'm, I'm going to be waiting for a guest to come on the show as well to come chat with me. Uh, I'm not sure who's going to join today. I put the link in a couple of our groups that we have on WhatsApp to see who's available to come. And we're going to be talking about the different teams. So let's go. Let's go. I know you guys are distracted by the EC ESL and it is crap. I agree with you, Damon. I don't appreciate appreciate what they've done and it's making me think about whether I should still support my club or not so I'm, I'm caught between two worlds at the moment with the, when it comes to that because I love that my club to bits but let's get into it let's start with Borland I think that's a very interesting team I'm going to put the squad on the on, on the on the screen for you we've got Yanaman Malan and Peter Malan who are probably the biggest signings in this particular team obviously coming over from the Cobras based in Cape Town They've now moved over to Poland, who they've played before. Before Peter has played differently for them before, and it's something that is interesting because you would have expected them maybe to stay in Cape Town, but they haven't. They've decided to move over to Poland, which is which is excellent for for Poland. It gives them a solidif solidifies the top order in a way. So they've got the experience of Peter Malan, and they can kind of create a spine over here with my, with Peter Malan, um, Van Sale. Um, Stian van Sale, and then hardest for you to to end off that like six or five six position as an all rounder, and you've got Hafield in there with with youth, Yanaman Malan with youth there in between, and of course the one and the only born and bred from Poland, we've got Ruan Blanche, which is an excellent player. Now they've also thrown in young Cubs player Michael Copeland, is a signed a nineteen player who is an excellent signing for them, and Clyde Fortain, a wicketkeeper batsman. But it's their bowling attack that really stands out to me, I feel. Uh, the likes of Hardisfield Yunuke, who, who obviously bowls seam, Fariska Adams as an all-rounder, Sia Bonga Maima, who we saw at the Cobras, of course. We, um, you've got the likes of um, Sean Von Berg ad adding some experience with regards to spin. Um, we've got an all-rounder in Michael Copeland as well. We've got Aishel Kluti, who is a very exciting young uh, seamer. And then we've got Ziad Abrams and Kyle Abbott. I think Kyle Abbott is a is a is a massive signing for for for, for Borland. I wouldn't have expected that to happen, and it, it's a massive deal from their part. Good decision for them to buy someone that has um, that has some experience to see him back. Yes, and it is. It's Kyle Kyle Abbott, and I was also quite shocked when I saw the news break um, when when I was told that Kyle Abbott would be signing with Borland. It was excellent. Um, I think it's an excellent signing for them from an experience point of view, and it also gives guys like Ziad Abrams some in, uh, some experience and gives them some insight into how they can improve their bowling going forward. So let's move on to the next one, and that is Western Province. 
Um, we've got Subair Hamza Calvarena, George Linda, Tony DeZorzi. I mean, those are the guys that stay from the from the Cobras. But the new signings are Yasin Valley, Cal Simmons, an excellent one, and Hashim Amla, and Bashir Walters, Wayne Parnell, and Vernon Philander. Those are the major signings when it comes to Western Province that are really here to bring experience. I think it's excellent from their part what they've done to to bring experience into this youth side that they were talking about. They've always had a young squad. And they just needed those experienced guys to really tip them over the edge. And then you can see over there, their Proteus player would be will be Bjorn Hendricks, um, which I don't know how some of you will feel about that necessarily. But it's a very balanced side uh, from Western Province side. It's a good balance between youth and experience. Um, then we can go on to Eastern Province. Um, Eastern Province is excellent as uh, their team as well. It's basically very similar to the Warriors team. So Matthew Brietzky, all the known name brands, uh, all the na same name brands that you know. So not no name brands. What am I talking about? Same name brands that you know about that come from the Warriors. Um, then you've got the likes of Diego Rosier, who came over from the Titans. Akuna Manyaka, that came over from the Cobras. Um, <clears throat> you've got... Let me just run through this quickly. Dane Patterson, who's somebody that you guys know as well. And Seppo Ndwandwa, who's an excellent signing as well from their part. Um, and so we've, and Anik Nokia is their protest player. So there's not much to talk about over here. There's not, I wouldn't necessarily say there are major, major signings that stand out and jump out to me when it comes to Eastern Province. But we'll hear what Mpo has to say a little later when I ask him who's his standout players, etc. So we'll bring him on very, very soon. <clears throat> then we've got his um, post team actually, Gauteng, I'd say. <laughs> I don't know who he's going to support this time around, but I probably will be Gauteng. But it's very, very similar to the Lions side. I don't think there's much here, dif much different here. Un other than Duan Olifir. That's a major signing, I think, for them. Um, bringing him back, obviously, the Colpac player. Um, extra pace into that side, of course. Um, excellent signing from their part. I'm looking forward to seeing Mitchell van Buren. I think he's an excellent player. Um, and then you've got your Proteus players like Demba Riza and Rassi that are obviously that we know about. And then amongst that all, you've got the likes of the, the talented Joshua Richards and Lutus Pamela. The youngsters are in there and Vian Mulder, etc. So... It's kind of a similar side. And then I don't know much about Cody Yusuf and Levit Mania. I'm hoping that um, Mumpo can obviously give me some insight into that a little bit. Um, and obviously, Kahiso Rabada is there as well, which I didn't put in the Proteus section over there that I missed him out there. But yeah, Kahiso Rabada will be there as well. Then we've got Northwest. Let's go over to Northwest. Um, Northwest was an interesting one because they kind of just Bought, they went crazy with the signings. I mean, a lot of the Lions players they brought over. Some of the guys already played for Northwest before, but uh, a lot of the Lions guys that we took get, like for example, Wesley Marshall, someone that someone that is very interesting signing from that point of view. I mean, he just recently going to over to the Lions, so it's, a, it's it's one of those situations where you're like teams only played one season franchise cricket at, uh, in Houting and then they have to move again. Um, not too far away, but they have to move. So Delano Putrita, of course, that's a massive signing, I think, for them as well. Um, Nicky Vandenberg, but he's been around the Northwest um, arena before. But the biggest signing for me over here is Senator Mutasami, who I think that a lot of guys wanted. I think a lot of guys wanted to, to sign Senaran because he adds some extra um, a variation with his all he's an all-rounder as well, and get bat as well. So and and his spinning ability. I think a lot of guys would have liked him and would have wanted him. And Duane Janssen. Obviously, Marco Janssen's twin. Um, they've signed him as well. And their Proteus player, obviously, being Dwayne Victorious. I'm also very interested in seeing um, Zuma because I obviously saw him come through the system or with the likes of Lungi and them. And and I, it's interesting to see that he's he's, he's, got, he's he's in the Division 1, so we can obviously see him. And then Nono Pongolo, which is actually a massive signing as well over there. Then uh, we got Free State, which is pretty much just the, the Knights team. Um, apart from... Uh, where is he now? I'm trying to look if I did put him in here. Um, apart from there, we go. Mangaliso Masechle, who I think is a decent signing. Um, Alfred Matoa, very interesting over there to see that um, in action. I would like to obviously see more in action, and obviously, the rest of them are pretty much this, pretty much the same. Um, expected from them. It's surprising that they didn't obviously keep Sean Van Berg, and we obviously know the story behind that. Then we've got KZ in Coastals, um, pretty much also the same as, as as the Durban team, apart from Jason Smith, which I think is an excellent signing from their part. I think Jason needs us in his career to be able to take his career forward. 
Um, it's something that will really push him to to the next level, I think, as a, as an all rounder to get more opportunities to play. It, it will be amazing to see the likes of of Jason Smith and Rwanda Swat in that in that middle or overs in the middle order over there. It would be excellent to see them two of them play together. Um, so I'm really excited to see this team play, and then obviously you've got your Proteus players over there as well. Then lastly, but not least, is Northerns. I kept it for later so that you guys can come watch later and you can wait for the Northern Steam, but it's pretty much the Titans team <laughs> that we saw before. Um, we've got the likes of Corbin Bosch coming back, which is a very interesting one. But the one that excites me the most over here is, uh, is um, Aya Romani. I think that's an excellent signing from their part. I think that's an excellent person that we really want to see him get into the Proteus side at some point. Um, so that's really something that I would like to see because we're looking for a black African batsman and this guy can carry his bat more than carry his bat. So very interesting point of view over there. Simon Arm over there, of course, but the one that, that I'm really, really excited about in the northern side is Tierveld Brevis. Now, we know he's a friend of the channel. We've done an exclusive interview with him. It's on this channel. Go look in the exclusive interview section. Of course, we've done an interview with him. And then you can know that they are laden with Proteus players. It's just like overwhelming in their team. So those are all the squads. Um, if Mpo wants to see some of them again, you can let me know. But we just welcome him to the show. Welcome to the show, Mpo. <laughs> like insights on the squad. How are you doing? How's it going? How's it? How, yeah, I'm good. Uh, well, well, hello to all the viewers. Um, yeah, so the squads. Okay. Um, I looked at that night squad and I kind of felt like they might struggle if the proteas are all available. And I look at that bowling, uh, that, that that bowling Arsenal that they have, and Gerald Kutsia is a talent, and he's gonna shoulder quite a lot of, of it. But Budaz has always been quite a tricky man um, to bowl. I just kind of felt that if you looked at all the squads, they probably may not have gotten the best of the of the lot. Um, so that's good. That's gonna be quite interesting to see how Free State do because they've always been a great team, especially at home. So that's gonna mm. be something to watch um, how they play away. I'm happy that Western Province finally found a way. Um, I, I don't know how it happened. I'm sure you know a little bit more. I'm hoping Ash, I, I think, I'm assuming Ash will make calls um, because it was looking dire because Boland was signing. They were just signing guys. Yanaman, they managed, they managed, Boland managed to even get Carl Abbott. Like that Boland team is, is, out, <laughs> is out for blood. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, 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 and that's, and, and, and obviously Stian Fancel is back. It's, 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 it's that Boland team is going to cause a lot of headaches, um, especially on that slow track at home. Um, I'm just, I'm just very interested to see how teams will, 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 will approach, uh, playing in Boland. Um, I know Sia Mahima is there in Boland, which is a good thing, uh, with Sean van Berg. I really do hope Mahima gets a lot more game time. Um, but 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 I but I think what I love most of all about this is that they're guys who are in the squads who are now going to get more game time. Like I think in EP Cabello Sukukun is a name that sticks out for me. Yes, it it, it, it it's glaring. It's like wow, okay, um, this kid is just uh, we're looking for black batsmen to play. Um, he's going to Robbie P. Um, with Lucy Bangwepe, who's also from the east uh, of Gauteng. So something he could get he could get quite a lot of game time. Um. KZN Coastal are, because by the virtue that they play in KZN and have had such a great home record, have now done something that that, that I, I, I'm, I'm really worried about um, because I think they just, they may have figured out a way to, to challenge the Titans and Gauteng. Tando and Tini with Lee Fantanzi, yeah. um, Othniel Bartman <laughs> is a very... It's an inexperienced bowling lineup, but it's but a very potent in pace attack. Yeah, potent, potent pace attack. They've, 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 they, they don't have Robbie Frylink anymore, so that 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 void is going to have to be filled by um, Andile Petluwayo. He's going to have to step up his batting um, in in the side um, because Robbie just was was everything to them. He bowled mm. well, he batted well, lower down the order, he 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 hit at a high strike rate. So that's going to be a big miss. But that that three, that young pace trio is going to be insane. And then the one that no one's talking about, Bryce Parsons. Bryce Parsons, Bryce Parsons is going to open for the tight for for the Dolphins, uh, KZN and Coastal. I don't know if they're going to call themselves the Dolphins. Um, Bryce Bryce Parsons. I watched Bryce. I had a front row seat to Bryce Parsons last week. 
um, destroying club cricket is here in Gauteng. It was a it was a Premier League final, T20 final, and Bryce Parsons I think scored seventy or, or thirty six or thirty something balls Excellent or fifty talent. balls. It was just it was just unbelievable. Um, and and so I was just I'm just angry at Gauteng for letting him go. I'm really angry. I don't know how they let him go. Um, but it's 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 it, that now that is going to be something that might come back to bite Khao Teng. Um, Cody Yusuf, as you were talking, um, he's a he's an all rounder, middle order batsman, but he's a bowler. He was he was bowler of the year at the Lions Awards last year, so he okay. got a call up. Mitch van Beeren, um, uh, who or, who also played in the same Ooh, team as Bryce Parsons. This team was ridiculous. Old old yeah. Edwardians had Wesley Marshall, Bryce Parsons, Mitch van Beeren as a two three four combo, um, in that in that in that middle order. Um, and 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 so Mitch van Buren is, is is a good middle order batsman. The Lions have always struggled with that middle order um, and low order. And I'm I'm happy that they found a way to split out some of the talent between Northwest and and them. Um, I'm happy Delano Portrita is playing for for Northwest. I'm happy Dwayne Pretorius is playing for Northwest. That gives Vian Mulder enough game yeah. time. To hone his skills and bat and own a, a top order, a, a, a number five, number six spot in that line side. Because obviously, if they pick their best team, um, Vian Mulder will still bat at six. But I think that's what Mark Boucher and what the rest of the country wants Vian Mulder to start batting at at number six and, and bringing in those runs. So that's a very important one. The other one you, you know missed like, out on the Titans. Yes. You know what I like over there about Delano and and Dwayne together, man. I like them together because they're learning. F- Dwayne will, I mean, Delano will learn so much from Dwayne Pretorius. And if Delano really wants to take his game forward, it's nice that they both go on over to the Northwest because it's like a, mm. it's a perfect thing for, for, for Dwayne to still have him there. As a limited as a oversight, confident. as a limited oversight, Northwest are very prickly. Nono is a great limited overs player. So too is, uh, you've got Senran Mutusami. You've also got Wesley Marshall. Um, as, as, a, as, a, as a four-day side, I think they might just be found wanting. Um, but I, I honestly do think that they have they have the ingredients of of, of being a very gun and a very good um, um, um limited oversight. The other siding you forgot at, at the Titans was Aaron Pangiso. Yeah, I didn't mention him. I didn't mention. Yes, him. that but one was a, that. That's an interesting. That was that was a shock for me. That was a shock for yes, me as well. But and I was waiting for you to come on to talk about it. I actually, that's why so I did Khalid, mention him earlier. So Khalid, here's the question, and I and and I we don't know who the coaches are going to be for these teams, right? Is Mandla going to be coaching Northerns, or will Jeff be to coaching Northerns? Because a lot okay, of the let, signings let, let of the this... Titans give me an indication that it might not be Mandla, but it might be Jeff. But they might be working in tandem together. But it it feels like Jeff's gotten a lot of his of all of the guys that he trusts back into the fold. It's very interesting. They didn't actually release who the coaches are going to be mm. with the teams. So that's yeah. quite shocking. That's quite weird. Because, I mean, Jeffrey Toyana is an excellent coach. And he has more experience than Mandela. So I would I would personally pick George uh, Jeff, Jeff Toyana as the coach. Yeah, he was, yeah, and he was coach of Northerns before this. Remember, yeah. all, the, all the provinces had already had coaches. Yeah. And the franchise coaches needed to sort, needed to find find jobs. So that's an interesting one there that, that, that we need to watch as we go on. But... I'm excited for the Titans. I think Corbin Bosch coming back kind of strengthens that that bowling and that bowling lineup, even though they've got protees in and around. And I think the problem with the Titans is that is the question of how they fit their protees in. But Chris Morris is there. Um and 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 I know I, I yes, they I know they've said Chris's attitude problems, but Chris wants to play test cricket for South Africa. Um and and so this is the season for him. This is the season for all the guys coming back. Like I'm Look, I'm not the biggest fan for Duan, fan of Duan, because I kind of feel as though um, he's 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 so super good at domestic, but he bowls one length, and and sometimes that that's the length that works, and it's that short length. But short length. I find, <laughs> yeah, um, but but I I kind of find that I hope that in the UK he's managed you know, on pitches that require him to bowl full, managed to get that 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 ball that's full not to be loopy because it always came out loopy and it came out. <laughs> Uh, it, yeah. just, it just, it just, it looked. You remember wrong. that series? You, know? you remember the series against India, um, as Centurion, we just like <laughs> just peppered them with, with the shorty liveries. <laughs> no, and, and 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 it works, and 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 I'm glad he's going to be giving. He's going to be giving uh, that 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 trio of Proteus bowlers a run for their money. So too Carl Abbott, 
um, Stian Fancel, uh, uh, no, not Stian, Simon Harmer signing for um, for 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 the um, for the for, for Northerns. That that's a that's a big one. But Northern, we kind of knew what Northerns was going to look like. I'm just in, I'm just happy that they yeah. got Aya Kamane, um up there as well. Um, I think for me, um, if you had to look at it, there, there, there's obviously some. There, there are some teams like there's a there's a there's a top level, and I think it's Gauteng, it's Northerns, it's KZN, and you could possibly put in Boerland. Then there's that middle yeah. tier, and the reason why I put VIP in that middle tier is because they haven't won, and 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 they're gonna have to learn to start winning games, and it might take a while for those senior players to get them to get the youngsters around them going again. Right. And sorry, and, I want to correct and, myself. It was against Pakistan, not against um, India. Yes. Um, on the field. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. yeah. Um and, and so I'll put I'll put I'll put um VIP in that second tier. Uh VIP with possibly even um with possibly actually VIP is probably on their own. And then there's the three at the bottom. It's 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 Eastern Province, it's the Knights, and it's Northwest. And I think those three might find it a little bit tougher um to navigate. All three are, are teams that are are uh, in a four day setting in a four day setting. I think in a in a one day setting those three teams at the bottom automatically shift up to the top because they've got game breakers um and and that's the that's the that's the interesting thing about those teams but um I kind of feel um there's like four teams that have put themselves up to fight for this thing the fifth team is western province and they need to figure out how to get this thing going because obviously the the big issue with western province was because they were losing so many games was it an actual problem was it a player problem what what actually is and I think now that they've got the players now we're gonna see whether um it's it's a problem or it's a, it's a problem in the change room or is it just a a situation that they never had great players uh, but I'm really happy Parnell's back for them I'm happy that Amla's back I'm happy that that um, that Buren is back in Cape Town and so too this is one team that's gonna give us two left armors that that from itself is just gonna be <laughs> a problem for every right hand in this country. Yeah. Um, yeah. even though he has and many Beddingham, I'm so right. happy Beddingham's back. Yo, David Beddingham yes. is a proper yes. player. I'm so happy that he's back. And they're giving yeah, John O'Bird a chance as well. So <clears throat> very interesting uh, to see that. And, and and the great thing about it is that obviously we're going to the West Indies for the test series, but when we come back, there's not a outside of the World Cup, and I think some of the some of the some of the protest test players will be at the World Cup. Um Rassi Temba. Aiden um, and, and and those it would be those three with with the, with the bowlers. But for the other batting slots around Dean, uh, Timber, Rassi, and Aiden, um, it's now pretty much everybody's fair game. Mm. It, it's anybody's game, looking, and it's for number five and number six. Mm. Looking at the way those teams have actually shaped the um, ball, it's going to mm. be a lot more competitive than people actually realized. People were talking about the domestic cricket and the standard. Kolpak players coming back, the senior players like Hashim Amala, Wayne Parnell, all these guys coming back for domestic cricket teams. This is going to be excellent. If you see how the way the talent is spread out throughout the country, the fact that we get to see a Bryce Parsons go to a to, to a KZN and get game time probably there, maybe, perhaps. And um, seeing a Tando and Tini going over and probably going to be the main bowler there too. So we've, we're we going to see the players that we never really, that we believed should have gotten starts in game time. We're going to see them get game time at other provinces now and play against other top players. I mean, who would have thought that so early on we'd see the future of South African cricket take on each other? Jonathan Bird versus Bryce Parsons. We've got the likes of Michael Copeland taking on the likes of mm. the rest as well. And there's so yeah. many young uh, Asbrook as well. There's so many youngsters yeah. around. And Levert Manje, the who played, yeah, Levert Manje played in the Under-19 World Cup last year. Exactly as well. Um, who I'm excited for him. He's, he's another black batsman that... That that's coming through, but the thing for me, Khalid, is it starts in August. By the time we get to to November, December, when the when our Test series starts to begin for the new round of the World Test Championship, you'll have enough of a sample size um, to then select a side um, for for the Proteus. And so for me, there's no excuse anymore. Um, it, it's it's Bouch has got all the resources. This is probably going to be one of the best played domestic seasons we will have seen from a quality standpoint of cricket we will have seen in probably before in in, a, in like a decade because the last time this it was this strong was when we we're producing colin ingram we we're producing riley rousseau and and they weren't getting into the side um and 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 we had guys like 
like um, we had guys like Kyle Abbott sitting out on the side, even though they were they were putting down numbers. So I do think um, this is probably going to be a, a very intriguing contest um, across all four from a four four day format, as well as uh, as well as the other formats as well. Because if you're gonna pick a T20 squad from these guys, um, it, it 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 opens up the pool, especially with the callbacks. For me, it's it's the experienced guys coming back. Um, adding that experience like into the dressing room and also across the other across the uh, on, on uh, across the 22 yards because for me that's the most important thing Vernon bowling to Bryce Vernon bowling to Keegan Peterson Vernon and Wayne bowling to um to 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 these kids Ayaka Mane to all these guys to to kind of give them um uh to kind of give them something and 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 it's and and I'm I'm just so I'm just so I'm um, I'm just excited. Um, I just hope they can sort out the boardroom stuff. You know, we we just got a we got a press release right now, and guys are imploring, asking, imploring, and everything else. And all we just want is we want to see. Um, and and this deserves a proper sponsor first of all, and it deserves proper rights. You can sell this. This you can sell. Um, to to Super Sport. This people will try and watch and follow. Um, throughout the day, imagine getting a Boland Vipia as an opening game, an opening uh, an opening game for this thing. Just mm-hmm. in, imagine you have Boland Vipia, you have uh, Eastern Province KZN, you've got uh, Northern Gauteng, and you've got Northwest uh, playing Free State. Now those are the games that you want to see. I want to watch all four. Okay, yes, I'm a cricket fan, but I think even neutrals will want to watch. Um, Vern bowling to Stia and bowling to Yanaman and P- and and Peter Milan and that 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 whole we left Vipia and and now we're here. So I've, I'm excited. I think you can solve if we can get a, a a proper board for cricket. You can solve this even to markets outside of South Africa. Yeah, of course. So guys, <clears throat> that's all we have for you today. Thanks a lot, Paul, for coming on the show. I've got some homework for you guys, though. After this video is done, I want you to go over to YouTube, into the comment section, not in the live chat, but on the comment section of the video, and let me know who you want me to bring on from the squads. Who would you like me to bring on my daily shows? And I'm going to try to reach out to them and try to get them on my daily shows. We'll be talking to them on there, and you guys can ask them various questions. So let me know after this video is done, after I've brought into the broadcast, and you guys can go over to YouTube and let me know in the comment section. Let me know on Facebook. Let me know on Twitter, Instagram me, whatever the case may be. Let me know who you would like to see me on my daily shows for the next couple of days. So, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the show. Um, let me know also who you support. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell for future videos. And go to clickerfanaticsmag.com for all our updates. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and we'll see you guys again with another daily show tomorrow. Take care, everyone.